Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our family room. Today, we are with you, and we have a wonderful program that is um, uh, 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 special and wonderful. We continue with our series today on um, in emotional intelligence. So we are so glad that you have decided to join us. We are so glad that you are part of this, and we are so happy that you have clicked on our family room. Now, uh, oh wait, Carlito, Carlito, where are you? Car oh no, Carlito is in quarantine right now. So he couldn't be with me. So, but he promises that he will be with us uh, the next time in two weeks from now. So um, sorry that Carlito isn't with me. Anyhow, remember that this is a collaborative effort between family ministries and children ministries at the North American division. And, you know, we have doctors Claudio and Pamela Consuegra who always bring us some wonderful, wonderful information in this 15 minute chat that we have. And then right after that, we have Sherry Urick who brings us some wonderful activities that are great for the whole entire family on the topic that we discuss. So don't forget, get together, get comfy, get ready because we are about to begin our family room. Again, thank you for being part of it. Thank you for connecting with us. Don't forget to like us, to like our page, Our Family Room on Facebook, and tell others so that they can also like us, so that you can get um, all the information that, that when, when we're ready to go live, okay, you will get a notification that we're going live if you like our page. So tell others. This is wonderful for the whole entire family, not just parents, not just one person, but the whole entire family, parents, uncles, aunties, grandma, grandpa, children, because the activity is specifically for children so that they can have a good time as well. So without taking any more time, I am going to go ahead and introduce to you two wonderful individuals from family ministries here at the North American Division, Drs. Claudio and Pamela Consuegra, who are going to give us some very, very good information. Doctors, it's all your time. We are looking forward to what you have to tell us today. Hey, Pastor Jerry, thank you for letting us know that Carlito is unfortunately quarantined, but at least he's okay. He's not like gone or disappearing. I, I thought he may have run away from home or something, but no, he's, he's okay. So we're good with that. You know, when I was a, a little boy, uh, my favorite holiday was Christmas because obviously I was expecting to get the toys and in my family we always got our clothes for the year at Christmas time too. So Christmas was a special day. Birthdays was also a special day because that's when I got my things. But as I got older and grew up and then I came to the States, I experienced a different holiday and that's Thanksgiving. And that became my favorite holiday of all. I still like, like Christmas and the other holidays a little bit, but Thanksgiving for me is the best one because it's an opportunity not to get, but actually to give. You give thanks. Little kids, children, don't always understand about being thankful. And one of the reasons is because maybe we haven't explained it. Maybe we haven't even lived it in front of them. They haven't seen that gratitude, that thankfulness. And, and so they don't know what it's like. They only, they're happy to receive things, but are they really thankful for what they have? And so we want to talk about being thankful tonight as part of our emotional intelligence series. What does it mean to be thankful and how do we teach our children to be thankful? So we're going to give you three tips tonight. And here's number one, moms and dads. And this one should really be no secret to you. Model thankfulness and gratitude yourself. You know, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, could it be that my child is not thankful for what they have because I'm not modeling a grateful heart? You know, think about it. Think about your words throughout the day. Do you get up in the morning grumbling because things aren't this way or that way? Or do you... Do you sometimes say, I wish we had that? Or, you know, think very carefully about your words because your children are listening. Model a thankful heart. Model gratefulness. Think about the little things from the time you get up in the morning, from the time your children get up in the morning and verbally say them. For instance, when it's breakfast time, 
I am so thankful that God provided us this wonderful orange juice for breakfast, fresh orange juice from the trees. Isn't that wonderful? You know, those things be very specific too. So instead of just saying, let's thank the Lord for our food, be very specific for the special items of food that you're thankful for. And look for those opportunities all throughout the day to say what you're thankful for because your children will model that behavior. You also need to make sure you have a good conversation with your kids about the difference between needs and wants. Something that you need, well, is something that you must have. For instance, food. But something that you may want to have, like candy, well, that's something nice to have every so often, but that's not a need, it's not a necessity. Maybe having a pair of tennis shoes to go to school or to go play basketball, that may be a need. Having the expensive tennis shoes that cost two, $300, that might be a want, not necessarily a need. Or having a jacket, you know, it gets cold outside, you need to have a jacket, that's a need. But do you have to have a jacket that costs way more than you can afford? So talk to your children about the difference between having something that you need and something that you just simply want. And the third tip we want to leave with you tonight is repetition matters. We can't just do it one day, especially with small children. We have to repeat it over and over so that they will actually be instilled with a mindset of gratitude, a mindset of thankfulness. For example, let's say you're going to visit grandma next weekend. You can have a conversation with your child. You know, when we go to grandma's, what is it you like especially about seeing grandma? And they may say, well, grandma always makes my favorite cookies. And you can say, you know what? When we get to grandma's today, I want you to tell her that. Tell her that you appreciate it. Tell her that you're thankful for her, for caring about your needs and making your special cookies. You so taking the opportunity to prepare them for those things. Maybe it's time when they go back to school, you can say, what is it you like about your teacher? What is it you like about your friends? But don't just leave it there. Encourage them to express that to their friends. Express thankfulness to all those that are around them. Now, keep in mind that it's not, what's important is not just talking to your children, sitting them down and telling them, telling them to be thankful, but rather teaching them from your example. I think you said that mm -hmm. earlier. So if you teach them by showing them, by saying it, I'm so thankful that we have a home. I'm so thankful that you can go to school, even if it's virtual right now. I'm so thankful that we have health. If you express thankfulness, your children will also learn to express thankfulness. So show it, teach them by example, and you'll see how your kids also will grow up to express how thankful they are for what they have. Hey, Miss Sherry, what have you got to tell our kids about being thankful? Hey there, kids. It's good to see you. Well, not really see you, but I know that you're there. Hey, I do have something very important to tell you. We were just talking about being thankful. And so I'm just wondering, can you think of, and when you think of it, write it down right into our comment section. Who can you be thankful of that wasn't mentioned? Like, for instance... You could be thankful for, oh, I know, the postman who delivers the mail to you all the time, even when it's raining or snowing or, or sun shining outside, he's delivering the mail to you. And so being thankful for him and what he does for you. Hmm, wonder who else? Oh, I know, you know, when you go to the grocery store and that person is checking you out, well, that is very, somebody very important to say thank you to because they're charging you just the right amount of money that uh, for your groceries that your mom or your dad is purchasing. And there's one other person, oh yes, uh, just the other night, 
uh, my husband and I, we went to Wendy's and we were for sure said thank you to the lady that handed us our little Frosties. And we wanted to be sure to thank her very much for those Frosties and the French fries. Mm, that was so yummy. We're so thankful that she did a good job and uh, got those for us. Who else can we be thankful for? Hmm. What if somebody opens the door for you or, or they keep the door open so you can go in? That's a time to be thankful and say thank you. Well, sometimes uh, saying thank you doesn't come very naturally. We need to practice saying thank you. So I made some puppets right here. Hmm, they don't look like very much, do they? Well, I took my color crayons right here and, or my markers and I made myself some little puppets. You can do that too. And so we're just gonna to practice together. This, this puppet right here, his name is Roy. And this puppet right here, her name is Alice. So here we go. Roy's going to say to Alice, hey Alice, thank you for taking the garbage out for me. I know it was my job. You're welcome, Roy. See how easy that was? I bet you could do it too. Let's think of another one that we can do together. Maybe Alice will start. Hey, Roy, thank you for hmm, opening the door for me. You're welcome, Alice. Or thank you, Roy, for letting me sit in the front seat. You're welcome, Alice. See how easy that was? You can make your own puppets. You can get some old wooden spoons that maybe your mom or dad has or your grandma and your markers and just make your puppets and you can just practice in your room or, or maybe you can have your brother or sister help you with the puppets and saying thank you and thinking of all kinds of ways to say thank you, all kinds of reasons to say thank you. You know what? Another good reason or another person that we can thank is Jesus. He is so kind to us and he's made us all kinds of pets that we can have. He's given us the weather, uh, if it's sunny or if it's snowy, where we can be thankful to him all the time. He has even sent his son to be with us always. You can ask your mom or dad to read you that story. That is really a cool story. Well, thank you for being with us today on your our family room. And I want to encourage you kids and moms and dads and grammys and grandpas to go ahead and make yourself some thankful kids right here and just practice. And then when you get out and where there's real people, oh, I shouldn't have said real people because I maybe Carlito would get upset with me because he's real too. But when you get around other people, then you can practice and say thank you also. Goodbye now. It was good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Sherry. Thank you for um, that wonderful uh, craft that you have. And I hope that all of you um, go ahead and, and do it. Thank you everybody for joining us today on our family room. We are so glad that you are part of this. Now we will be coming back um, in two weeks from now. So make sure you put it on your calendar. February, Tuesday, February the 2nd at 7.30 here on our family room on Facebook. Uh, join us for another 15 minute chat. And this, this next week, we're gonna be talking about sad. The, the emotion of sadness. So make sure that you join us, okay? Carlito can, oh, oh I forget, Carlito's not with me, um, but he will be with us in two weeks from now. So anyways, thank you for joining us. God bless you all. Remember, thankful, being thankful, saying thank you, very important, especially learning it in your family and then spreading it around. God bless you. We will see you next week. Bye.